What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, appreciate you stopping in. Today we're going to be doing a DIY algae scrubber build on the frag tank that's in the other room. Uh, this is a 20 gallon tall sump that I pretty much sectioned off with acrylic and glass from Lowe's to basically make the sump for that system. Now I've been using the uh, Refugium not only in this system but in the 125 gallon for a long time. I've never actually used a algae scrubber but I've heard some good things, I've done quite a bit of research on it and I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. Before we get into the build, I briefly want to talk about what type of algae scrubber I'm going with and how I plan on plumbing it into the system. Now there are two types of algae scrubbers that I know of. There is the waterfall, which I'm going with, and the under the water version. The reason why I went with the waterfall version was the fact that it was easier to install, it required less parts, and at the end of the day, if you're doing DIY stuff, simpler is definitely better, at least in my opinion. Now when it comes to plumbing this particular algae scrubber, you can do it one of two ways. You can add a designated pump like a MaxiJet 1200, connect it to the PVC allowing it to push water through and down the screen. The second way is to simply connect it to your overflow pipe. Now if you only have one like I do, I'm going to end up teeing it off, sending some of the flow down to the algae scrubber and then the other is going to have a ball valve on it so I can adjust the flow in which uh, actually goes through that scrubber or ends up going down the regular line. You guys will see that here uh, as we get to the build. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the build. Now the first thing I need to do is remove all the equipment so I can pull the tank out and remove that refugium baffle. Now it's just a piece of acrylic held in there with silicone, but there was no way I was going to remove that with the tank underneath there. It's just a really tight fit. And speaking of that, I ended up breaking the bubble trap uh, glass right before the uh, return line when I was pulling out the main pump. That's pretty much how tight it was in there. But uh, overall, it wasn't that bad. I just super glued the glass back together, put the chunk in there, and it works just fine. Once that was done, I went ahead and removed the macroalgae, tossed it in the trash. I'm also going to go ahead and throw out this live rock. There's about 35 pounds in there. Now, the reason why I'm throwing it out is I've had it for several years, and I ended up getting it used. So who knows how old it is and what has happened to it. And I think that it might be part of the reason why I'm having, having some nutrient issues in the system with not even having any fish in it, or at least having a minimal amount of fish. So I, uh, I feel that I'm just going to go ahead and toss it out and use the marine pier block because honestly that marine pier block has so much more uh, surface area for beneficial bacteria than all that live rock combined. Okay, once that was done, I went ahead and I pumped out about five gallons of water into a bucket. That way I have a place to put the marine pier block while I'm doing this build. The last thing you want to do is leave it out in the air to kill all that beneficial bacteria. So leaving it in the water that is actually in the sump will definitely be all right for the next few hours. Once I removed the marine pier block, I went ahead and I pumped out as much water as I possibly could, just basically making the tank light enough to move it into the other room. Check out what I found while I was removing the water out of the sump, the uh, pistol shrimp that I put in there that was originally in the display refugium. Now I put him in here because he was basically tearing up all the sand in the display refugium and kind of making piles over the place. I have since put him in the main display's uh, sump, which I have uh, regretted uh, since I've done that because he has literally torn up the entire sump and it's just it's adding nutrients back into the tank because that sand hasn't been disturbed in a long long time so I'm kind of dealing with that now and I couldn't really catch him if I wanted to in that sump so uh, I'll just make do with all his digging and the nuisance that he brings to my refugium uh, for now at least. The next thing I'm going to do is come in with my shop vac, suck out all the water and sand. I like to use the version that connects to the five gallon bucket so I simply just sucked everything out and threw it in the backyard. Once everything was cleaned, I went ahead and I super glued the glass I broke while I was removing the return pump. I'm just using the regular super glue that I use for my frags. Okay, now that the tank is back underneath the stand, it's time to remove the old refugium light to make room for the algae scrubber. Okay, once I got the light out, it was time to plumb in the return pump. I'm simply using a 600 gallon utility pump that I had actually on the original Zeovit system, and it works great. I do have a ball valve on there just in case I need to adjust the flow going to the frag tank. Now because I moved the sump forward to make room for the algae scrubber, I simply had to add an elbow and a couple inches of PVC to make the uh, return pump connect as normal. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the overflow pipe. Now it is one inch PVC and I did cut the end there and put filter sock just to stop any of the water that was in it from dripping onto the floor. What I'm doing now is just going to adjust some of the bracing that I have. It's zip ties screwed into the wood. It's pretty simple. And uh, I will be adding a couple of them to this pipe just to prevent the algae scrubber from dipping when it gets heavy with all the algae. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is figure out where I want to put the tea. The reason why I'm doing this is I don't want all the water going to the algae scrubber. I want to have some of it going down the main drain with a ball valve. That way I can adjust the pressure or at least the amount of water going down that drain so I can send more to the algae scrubber if I feel that I need more. And uh, of course, I don't want all the water coming from my return going through the algae scrubber because it will become clogged over time and then you might overflow your tank. Once I make the cut, I'm going to go ahead and add the one inch T and of course add the one inch ball valve. I will continue one inch PVC all the way to the left at the point where it makes a 90 degree turn. And then what I'm going to do is add a one inch to three quarter inch uh, 90 degree elbow. And then I'm going to add a coupling, which will allow me to add and remove the algae scrubber as needed so I could clean it. Okay, now that my plumbing is set up and it's the way I want it, uh, it's time to go ahead and make the actual algae scrubber. Now guys, this is a pretty simple process. I went ahead and I took a permanent marker to make a straight line as a guide in which I'm going to cut into this PVC. Now it's going to be big enough to fit the mesh and also allow water to come out and flow down the mesh. Okay, now that I have my guideline, I'm going to go ahead and get my Dremel tool out and make the cut. Now I am using a wooden bit of some sort from Home Depot. It's relatively cheap. I think it was only a couple bucks. Now I'm using this bit because I don't want to use my diamonds just because they're so expensive and I tend to use them just for cutting coral. And uh, actually it worked out great. I mean there was really no issues with it cutting. It did skip around a little bit but uh, just get control of the PVC and you'll be alright. Now I really don't know another way of making this cut without a Dremel tool. Um, I, I'm not a carpenter, so I don't really know what other tools are on the market that will allow you to make something so precise as this. But uh, if you don't have a Dremel tool, I recommend you get one. I know you can get a whole kit on eBay for like 35 bucks, and it has this extender like I have, which allows you just to hold the actual bit without having to hold the whole tool. So uh, look into that if you don't have one. But uh, other than that, guys, it was a pretty simple job. It took a couple minutes with the Dremel, and uh, it turned out great. All right, once that was done, I went ahead and I measured out the mesh and cut it to size. Now, I did pick this stuff up at Joann Fabrics. It was only a couple bucks, and it's just simple uh, knitting mesh. Now, once the mesh is cut to size, I'm going to go ahead and put it inside the PVC about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to come through with some zip ties just to hold it in place. Now that the algae scrubber is assembled, the last thing you need to do is rough up the mesh. Now, what this does is it allows the algae to have something rough to grab onto, and it makes it easier for the algae to attach and grow. Now what I'm using here is an old diamond drill bit and I'm just scraping both sides of the mesh over and over again and making it as rough as possible. Okay, I went ahead and added a little bit extra to the build. I simply put in two pieces of acrylic, one to protect my apex from any splashes and the other one to protect the light bulb. Alright, let's go to move into the bulb that I chose for this build. I'm using a 38 par 54 watt LED that I picked off of eBay. It's actually a hydroponics bulb. It has uh, 12 reds and 6 blues. Now these are going to be in the ranges that allow plants to grow or at least photosynthesize the best. So I figured this would be a good bulb to try out on the build. Now when it comes to hanging up this light, I used just the swiggle light from Home Depot. I went ahead and connected it to the bottom of my stand via zip ties. I uh, drilled through the stand, used zip ties instead of screws. That way I could still have stuff up top without worrying about uh, you know a stabbing into it. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty bright stuff. It definitely uh, fills up the whole room, that's for sure. And uh, it does have a pretty decent spread on the algae scrubber. And uh, honestly, it uh, it's doing its job. The algae scrubber has only been up for about a week, a week and a half or so. And I'm already getting a good thick layer of algae. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the performance so far. Now, when it comes to my lighting schedule, I'm going to run it like a refugium and just have it come on whenever the lights are off on the uh, frag tank. Now I still have to do some more research and see what kind of results people get with running it 24 hours a day opposed to 12 hours. I do know that algae needs a break and it does need uh, downtime so running a, a refugium 24 hours a day isn't good so I just imagine that running a algae scrubber is probably the same way. When I do some more research and I find out what works best I'll give you guys an update. Well guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it to be helpful and somewhat entertaining. I will keep you updated on the build. I'll give you a, an algae growth update in probably three or four weeks just to see how things are working. And of course, I'll let you know about the 24 hour opposed to the 12 hour light schedule. Now, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put in the comment section below or contact me directly. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like the content that I provide for this community, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I got videos coming out all the time. And as always guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.